Hey guys, so Hyla here. Welcome to Rare Fitness, a brand new YouTube channel to help you guys learn some dish jumping. But for this, we're gonna be using Medibank Pain from the App Store. Okay, so without further ado, let's tap open Medibank Pain and explore its interface at first. I'm opening Medibank Pain now, as you see, and it's giving me this error. Okay, so no worries. It's because, just as it does, I don't have a stable internet connection. Or rather, I'm not connected to the internet at all. So, that's okay. Just tap OK. It, it does not affect your um, artwork in any ways or the stuff that is stored. But, yeah, there's this drawback that you can't add text without the internet connection. So... Usually when you log on to Medibank Pain for the first time, it gives you this thing. Uh, it's like, you know, you have to sign up or sign in to ArchTreat. And for that, you know, you just need to do this very simple process. Enter your email address, a unique username, password, and tap go. So that's when you sign up and you get a confirmation mail on your email address which you entered. And you can confirm it that I am me. Okay. So there are a lot of options here, but I want to take you from top to bottom all the way down. So first you see this blank thing and it says ID. Well, actually, when you're connected to the internet and have logged in to Medibank Pain, then it shows your Arch Street username and a unique ID, which is given to you. Now the settings tab there, uh, you know, helps you edit your profile, check out your user info or just log out. Under draw, there is something called new canvas which can help you start a new artwork. You can either randomly just open a new canvas, browse and import from other apps, scan and import a particular picture that you must have drawn or any photo or whatever you like. The next tab is my gallery. Uh, um, I mean, yeah. So after that, you can see my gallery where you can view your previous artworks then there is an option called continue so you can catch up on any artwork which you left out recently then under submit artwork you can submit your work in case there is a contest on art street you will be notified for that uh, if you allow notifications for medibank pain then there is everyone's art where you can view others art which has been posted on art street or medibank pain you can post to our street through Medibank Paint itself. You don't need to, you know, separately have a look at it. There are certain tags which they usually mention in the guidelines. Now, under tutorial, you can view various tutorials and tutorial videos and have a quick tour even of this amazing app. Under the others, uh, you will be able to see the notifications if you received any contests, FAQs that, you know, generally come up. You can give feedback on the app and others which are actually necessary like moving ads or rating the app, sharing it, the terms of use and obviously one of the most important things, the privacy policy can be viewed here even after you download the app. Then also there's a stylus pen settings so you can, you know, you can connect your stylus and check with pre, uh, pre, pen pressure settings and uh, allow palm rejection that's something in general about the app right now when you have the first look at it moving on we're gonna start a new artwork okay so i'm currently tapping on new canvas and you see the presets so presets you i've currently chosen device size well, you can choose something different. Just tap on the current option. Under web header, you have you can either draw under device size, or you can make maybe a square. Or there's something called Medibank cover art, which is basically you know those magazine covers, comic book covers, that size uh, which Medibank offers. And there's an uh, Art Street My Page header. Now story, characters, and backgrounds and clip art. The or like you know options giving you to add characters backgrounds or clip art which can which can be made now and added later line stickers okay now the thing about line sticker is you know those sticker brushes they can be made using line sticker these three templates are having different times number um the whole point is to know the pixel size like how many pixels so if it says one that means like you know the size of the pixels and the background changes. 
then you can draw a permanent to the Twitter, uh, typical Twitter image, uh, a Twitter header, a Twitter icon, or if you are a uh, Pretty much like a paper person, you can draw according to A4, A5, A6, B5, B6. Okay, that is interesting. I've never tried those, but I'll try them for you guys. No worries. Or you can go for letter size, a legal size, like those full scale pages and postcards as well. But my favorite one here is actually square because I love square. Okay, so we're going to square. And the height and width for it is already given. You could also change the height and width. Um, you can change the resolution, color coordination, opacity, whatever you want to do. Oh, this is under the... Um, now, I forgot to mention this thing. This is under the standard templates. There's also an option called comic templates. If you switch, you can choose between comic templates. It's like Dao Jinchi. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it the right way. There is A5 sizes, two of them, with different resolutions. Then B5 sizes of the same kind. Then there is manga of A4 and B4. So there are like four resolutions. Then there's four panel comics, four panel titled comics, which means you have some space for a title. Then you can draw according to the American comic book sizes, you know, 11 by 17, with two different resolutions, that is 350 and 600 dpi then if you do not want to go by the usual presets you can add your own width own height own border you know outer border inner border and you can uh, add bleed change the resolution add the background color and even choose if you need a cover page or not like this is amazing okay this app is got you like you can do so much within just a single app a lot of people actually use this for manga, but I say you can use it even for simple things. If you're starting with digital art, it's maybe one of those really good apps for, you know, the high-end pro apps like Procreate, which are extremely costly for a lot of people to afford. So having chosen my preset as square, we're going to go and tap done. So my new canvas gets started. Now it has been loaded. Um, well, now I got to tell you what all these things that you see like this is this huge space right there's so many things so this first one here is to view your layers yeah there's a predict alpha normal like there are the layer options here you can do a clipping mask lock layer this is for scene hide then this you can duplicate your layer Okay, once you duplicate it, I feel like deleting it. So I can just tap the delete button, give me an option to delete. Yes, I want to delete it. Too many extra layers, not good for health. Well, this option, uh, like layer swap option, is only available in the pro pack, the creative pack, as they call it. Um, ideally, I don't feel like I need it, but you know, eh, you're free to get it. Uh, then there's these three dots. You can either choose to clear the layer, flip the layer vertically or horizontally, add a watercolor edge and other filters. You can actually even merge the layers or rasterize it. And um, it can only do that if there are more number of layers, right? Now, right next to this layer button, there's this material stuff. You gotta add materials from. Uh, now the second one that you see is actually something I created and to add a material it's quite easy but for right now we're just gonna be focusing on the interface and I really wish I could tell you guys more. Now there's this text option. Unfortunately even if you double tap it or tap it too many times you can only use it when there is an internet connection so it's the only thing in this app that kind of brings it down but in case um, you can, you know, actually make up without just adding text. If you are really good at calligraphy, then maybe the text will just just get out of the way, please. Then right next to it, there is an operation tool which allows you to edit materials. You can have a look at, you know, the horizontal vertical slices, how the panel spacing should be and stuff. So, yeah, it's absolutely like, you know, when you add, once you add a material, that can be done and then there's this one called divide tool which is used to create comic templates 
now okay so if you hadn't create if you have created a comic template then you can have a look at like the foreground color if you want to add a title but okay so uh i'm just gonna type down the for the template i can actually edit the you know stuff and it is gonna give me a proper template and then after that we have the erase all tool so if you select using it like uh, you know you can select a particular portion like this and you can erase using this tool so if you've er you probably erased the part you have selected now it's pointless because there is nothing I can search I can show you what I can can be done so say I draw like this and use this and select then I'm just gonna erase it right away so why why isn't it erasing and oh yeah this is the option down again I don't know and this just erases it select okay that was a little bit of a confusion there because i got confused never mind and here this one is to draw a selection like this so random and i'm also gonna move this why is it Now, okay, so this one is to, you know, create a, a selection. Now, if you choose a rectangle one, it helps you choose a rectangular select, like a rectangular selection. If you choose this ellipse, you can maybe draw a elliptical selection. If you take this, you can draw a hexagon or any shape rather. It's like you can draw a polygon and and okay yeah now i got this one so once you select it like this and you tap on erase it's going to erase it okay so i messed up the last time now if you can take this one as a lasso tool so you select freely mm -hmm. you turn on anti analyzing which is helpful in making sure you don't have exact stuff you see so i want to turn on that again you can constrain portions or select from the center it's all you which is or you can just release a selection because you don't need it anymore now there's this option to allow you to make a gradient it, these gradients are linear straight gradients so you can make it radial as well now that's your choice um so you see that makes it a good gradient you can do foreground or just go forward back forward back is like so you can switch to back and front colors by just tapping here on that color um i want to choose my back color to be white not white pink okay uh so we're gonna do tap so it actually helps you do this gradient in different angles and different modes then the next tab is a fill tool, a bucket tool which allows you to fill the selected area with color or into the whole area if you haven't selected any. Uh, what's up? I'm gonna tap the bucket tool and fill. So fill the color using the bucket tool and now we're gonna use the fill tool we use to create shapes with a fill color now i can choose between different shapes you can do a polygon and an ellipse this is um this is my rectangle or square this is my ellipse and i can make a polygon as big as i want apparently like how many of us sides you wish to make i don't know how many sides this is going to be making 
Like, okay, so in this you can either anti-analyze or not, and you can even stream potions and select from the center. You can also run counters. It won't really run counters right now, you need to update it before you start off, okay? Then this one here can be used to resize the layer, like, you can flip it, you can rotate it, you can use different options, you can flip, you can reset it to its original, you can move it, ooh. Okay, then you can increase the size, you can decrease the size. Or you can also have, this is just for altering, there is a free transform. So you can have perspective of flip, I mean, so many options. There is mesh transform as well. All this is by cubic sharp because it maintains sharp edges even after you're done. It's not very important, you don't want to have it zag, okay? So you'll have sharp edges even after you transform. The next one is this. So the move tool is usually used to move things in the current layer, like boogie boogie boogie. Okay, so it actually depends on your origin. You can just move it, mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't really interfere with the other layers. Now, if I add another layer, then it won't move that one. You just move this one here. And this one is a dot tool, which allows you to draw the dot brush. Um, you can increase the pixel size to as much as you want. Currently, I'm just gonna increase it. The max size is three, and you see it's kind of dotty. It's pixelish. If I zoom in, like this, to show you now. Okay, so we're like rare fullness. I know I'm a little bit of a mess here. Uh, and then the right, we have this tool, which is a shape tool. You can draw a straight line or a ziggy, zagged line. It's just ultimately crazy because you can draw as much as you can and just fix it. Then you also have option to draw a rectangle. Uh -huh. or a square, it depends on the size and there's a curve so if I do this I can do this and it comes out of it pretty good and you fix it then you have an ellipse I know my screen looks very messed up right now so I'm just gonna clear it up there's an ellipse, voila next we have a polygon so like all others So you tap about it and it'll be done. Then we have the eraser tool. You can change the size of the eraser, the opacity, turn on or off anti-analyzing, turn on or off correction, add a soft edge or not, display a brush cursor if necessary. A brush cursor is basically this, you know, round thing you see, which comes. If you like turn it off, then it just won't be seen. Okay. So now I turn it off, you can't see it. You just hear it like, ooh, that's a ghost. So, well, I usually turn on brush cursor so that I can actually keep track of my razor moving around the place. Okay. And then we have this option for brushes. Now, you have so many brushes to choose from. There are also brushes, um, you can add or copy it if I add brushes. There are brushes on cloud, which are pre-built metabank brushes, which are extremely amazing. I have downloaded most of them. There's hardly any left to download. Or there are standard brushes, which you can use to create your own stickers and brushes. So it's tapping pros now. You can rearrange the brushes or edit them according to your choice. And if I move this a little, you can see this brush. You can change the settings of the brush. This is the pen brush. Increase the size. You know, it's opacity. Ah, nice color, right? You need to choose the minimum width to just. And then um, you can choose its type. You know, check if you need to change it by pressure, opacity, fade in, or fade out. Now there's more option where you can turn on or off anti-analyzing or even make sure if you want to see the brush cursor or not. I usually turn it on as I said before because 
it kind of gets confusing for me. Now, if you see over here, there are options to save your shortcut preferences, participant settings, multi gestures, multi just touch gesture settings. Oh my god, my tongue. Okay, it's twisting a lot. Then there is a stylus pen position adjustment. You can turn retina display off, export the files in this, or you can export the files as a custom format. Okay, so it's like you can do it as images or as custom. You can have a look at the cloud features which are available. You can check auto recovery, okay? You can check how how many minutes do you want to buffer for auto recovery. So within five minutes I will pin back my uh, so it, there's a lot of options like 2, 5, 15 or 30 minutes which means that if I close the app by mistake and open it by another 2 minutes then I will have my you know um, the art back like my artwork it will be still there with the last stage now I'm gonna, I put it on 30 minutes because I sometimes just close it like so you know I forget to save it it is a horrible thing you forget to see it now you keep auto recovery on because you never know when it has you can add a references here you see the reference tree, reference tree so you can add targets it requires um the reference tree requires um creative pack update what i do is i just have a small layer which is on, right on top and i use it to refer to my thing I know it interferes with the artwork, but like it's one thing to do without pain, okay? I'm just having a look and teaching you guys about the primary features which I review. And then you can you know, reset the tips or the display settings because you know sometimes you make some changes. Or you can just close the canvas. So when you close the canvas, there are options like save and leave, save without leaving, and just cancel it, don't leave. And this one right beneath those three lines is options to mess with our layer not mess actually you can oh so uh for to crop or to cut or copy you need to first make a selection oh i made a selection i'm gonna cut it and there's option to paste so i paste it <laughs> it pastes a different layer you don't need to worry okay uh, then I'm just undoing something. <laughs> then there is a uh, copy paste options. There is you can rotate the canvas to the left or to the right. Wait, now this wasn't how it looked before. So why? Okay, move on. Looks scary. No, didn't look like this either. Oh god, what happened to the canvas? Okay, it was like this. I freaked out. Okay. You can uh, rotate the canvas horizontally or vertically you can change the resolution and it's absolutely up to you how far you want to go you can even change the width and height of your artwork right in the middle like doing a art session which is absolutely amazing you can change it in centimeters or in inches um then you also have options to change your canvases like you see something similar right then you also have options to add a comp uh, you know if it's a calming template then you can change that you can change the background color midway like i'm in artwork the beginning i feel like it should be pink later i'm like man can we just have white please so i can change it you can display a grid it's just a normal grid and it's gonna give you a grid, a grid and you can just draw and you can even remove it like you know you can just Undo the grid. Just undo the grid like that. And you can crop, paste, like, you know, stuff. And on the second one after that, you can select all the objects possible on the screen. You can deselect them. You can invert a selection. Invert selection is like, you say I have selected just a small portion on the canvas. And now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just go... That, no, I don't want to select this part. I want to select the rest of the canvas. That's what we do here. So for that, like I select this part. But I don't want this part to be selected. I want the rest, like the whole rest of the canvas. That's where we invert a selection. So you see this white part, right? That is selected now. So going on next up is 
create selection from layer. So uh, it changes its brightness, and the next one, create selection from layer opacity, it changes the opacity of the selection duration. You can expand your canvas. Like, Ooh. When they're not doing that, it's going to look horrible. Or you can contract it. You can even draw a selection border. It's just amazing. Now, this is to rotate left, right, flip, or rotate back again to the previous. Very simple options. Now, this one can give you different kinds of lengths. Now, oops, forgot to back the thing. Can, okay, you see these uh, parallel lengths? You can draw along them. There are uh, indications. You can see these crisscrosses. Why should I brush that to full? You could draw along the crystal set to give you like sort of a red feeling. You cannot draw. Uh, so when you have the crisscross, you cannot draw slanting. You can only draw sleeping or standing. And it's absolutely sleeping sliding. You have vanishing point. So. You see? <laughs> This point which keeps on vanishing. <laughs> and you have speed lines. Like right here. You can add speed lines like this. Then uh you have concentric circles. You can draw as many, you can change the grid location, you can even do something like, you know. Um, change the radius and stuff. Absolutely up to you. You can draw a curve. Like this. So instead of a curve. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you can draw ellipse. And there are others, I've never tried them. Oh, okay, you can see it's not full snapped. These are again for your pressure pen settings in case you have not connected. I have not connected to my own stylus because this is just a tutorial. Now, underneath that, there is this color palette. Okay, you can choose with this, this color wheel, or you can add colors to the palette, like you know, and you can choose like this. I usually prefer the, prefer the color wheel because I can differentiate. And right below that is this one, which includes your br uh, brush settings. Then, or you can use actually this one. Um, but I don't really. Uh, when you choose this particular tab, you can actually have a look at the position. Okay, now, uh, we're, yeah, I was talking about the position. Well, actually, if, let's do another size, like, if you see the bottom right, right, bottom right, you see now it's 500 pixels, now if I move it down, it reduces the size, move up, it increases the size. The same other thing with this opacity, you can move it down and reduces the opacity, like, or you can just tap it and increase it, and then full size it. Oh. So back to these, it's just something I love. This one is used to zoom in and zoom out and load a canvas using our fingers, like, you know, when you're connected to stylus and there's palm rejection. So that's when you use it. And there's eyedropper, which helps you select a particular color. Oh. Why is it just coming? Okay, now I can. Now you must have been seeing this thing like this particular thing moving around have been moving around i moved around these one two three one four four twelve dots which we get here um this tab is actually very important there are undo redo options switch between pen and eraser make transparent eyedropper here as well there is a save you save you can save it to the cloud or whatever there is cut option there is paste option, there is a selection option, there is, you know, the select options which were there before. There is expand or whatever options that you need. And there is flip, rotate back, 
uh, erase like fully your inner like um if you're in a layer and you want to completely clear every single thing on it just tap clear there is stuff like this and when you tap on this other arrow thing like yeah so when you tap on it you can choose to see or not to see <laughs> what like these options so, so i might like some of these options but you may not really want it so you can turn them off simple well, that's a little glimpse of this app, and if you liked it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you guys next time.